Hi guys and welcome to the Astrodog channel. We're going to have a look at two awesome telescopes. The first one is from TS Optics and the other one is from Kaesong. They're very similar. They're long focal length telescopes. Um, what's so great about um, these types of telescopes? Well, first of all, you've got a very great natural magnification. You can look at fairly small targets, particularly planets um, and smaller constellations like the jewel box really, really easily. And it, they're just a, a joy. The other thing is this particular focal length means that you can use quite inexpensive eyepieces with it and get extraordinary results. That's right. With a long telescope, even using a basic eyepiece, you can get amazing views. You don't have to spend five or $600 on an eyepiece to get a good view. So yes, it looks like, you know, like the retail I think of one of these um, is I think up to 2000 but you don't have to buy two or three eyepieces at four or $500 to get great views. So if you're just starting and you know that you're not an astrophotographer and you're not gonna be out at night for hours and hours and hours, you just wanna go out and get some terrific visual views and go back inside, these are definitely the way to go. And despite these slightly initial higher cost um, than perhaps um, uh, some of the shorter ones, you are getting really an amazing deal because these are also ED APOs and they are always expensive because they are rare glass elements. So let's just talk about the TS Optics ones first and a few of the features that we'll compare later. So starting from the top end here, we do have a metal dew shield, which is quite nice. The dew shield does extend out um, and does so quite nicely. Um, we are talking of a length of approximately one and a half times the aperture. Uh, a little bit more than that, possibly up to two. The function of the dew shield is twofold. It's first of all to reduce the inner reflections within the telescope from the light that comes in and eliminates stray light. And the other function that it has is to reduce the amount of the um, uh, reduce the amount of this front lens that is exposed to the sky, and that cuts down on the amount of dew. So here, the exposure is about hundred percent. When you push it back all that way to here, you've got only about 25% now that's actually exposed um, to open space compared to the other amount. <laughs> so it's a lot less dew that accumulates because of a dew shield. The minimum that's required for a dew shield to be effective is about one and a half. This has got two. Um, we'll talk more about that later when we get the case on one, um, but that's quite good. Moving down, it's nice that it automatically comes with your rings, nothing else to buy. Um, so you've got that there. These loosen quite nice, nicely, they've got beautiful knobs. We've got um, good clean layering underneath. Um, we have quite a, a long Vixen plate, which um, improves the stability that the scope has when it is mounted, as opposed to the little one. This is not gonna go anywhere, it's not gonna wobble, um, and it's um, standard aluminium. So it uh, is quite good. This end here, uh, on the other end, is where it starts to get really interesting, and there's a few things we wanna point out. You'll notice here that it is set up for binner viewing. So if you'd like to use your binner viewers, what you will do is you will simply unscrew this. Yes, the actual tube is split in two. So you need to unscrew this whole section and then you unscrew this and you attach that back onto this end and that ends up shortening the scope. The focal length, just again, in case you've missed it, is um, F11 for this particular scope. Um, it's interesting as well that possibly because of all of this what's going on at this end, they've chosen to put the finder down right here on the bottom. So I find that probably a little bit awkward, right? Because that brings it really close to where you want to view and you can end up banging your head um, against the finder, which I find a little bit annoying, um, but that's just something to be aware of. The finder does come with two screws. It gives it a really, like a really, really solid attachment, which is terrific. Um, the fine focuser has got like a little cap here, don't be alarmed. <laughs> And um, yeah, it's qu quite lovely. Um, it is very smooth, um, works very nicely. Um, and then at the end, you've got the usual two inch to um, uh, 1.25 inch. And what's interesting, they seem to have also got three screws here. So you can seat your accessories that you've got quite firmly on the back. And it natively comes with a two inch to 1.25 inch adapter. So you can just put in a 1.25 inch diagonal if that's what you've got and you can use that, but if you want to, you can unplug it, put in a two inch, and away you go. Um, what's really lovely about this one here is of course the rear glasses that I've already mentioned uh, a little bit before. Um, they are quite lovely, FPL 51, I believe. 
um, and also it's got a lithanthium um, layer on it which is a second glass and that does give it uh, quite good uh, quality as in really good um, there are two versions out for this particular telescope there's the ed and there's then the, the apo that they call um, so the ed is for the vast majority of people good enough but if you want like absolutely color free you would go to the apo uh, version that they've got which is a bit more expensive but hey, it is, it is the best that you've got. Um, just to demonstrate a little bit further about this matter. So this here is just the um, Astro Essentials um, finder here um, for this sort of thing. Um, and this here is the um, ASI 120 Mini. This is something typically that you might put on for your alignment, for, your, for various other things. As I said, what you would do to put this one in, you would, you would put that into the back here, uh, like so, and then you would bind that down and away you go and as you can see it does intrude just a little bit on on this end here but it's it's quite livable um it'll do quite well and that fits in very nicely um for those of you that are looking for a uh really really simple setup these are amazing um it's cheap and it works really well just remember that the astro essentials this part here loosens and you can and and you can move this in and out to adjust the focus and then when you've found it perfect that's when you lock it down on here. So these work really well um, with any sort of scope that you want to do imaging with. It's simple, it's inexpensive. We've got both of these on the website um, if you need it. Of course, the other thing that you can use with all these scopes that we recommend is a, um, is a, uh, is a desiccant cap. Um, these are very effective. The way these work is, um, I'll show you, the unscrew on. The desiccant goes in here. Um, as you know, that sort of like sucks out um, moisture, um, which is really good to have. And when you're finished with your night's viewing and you're taking it inside, what you do is you simply add that, remove the white, um, remove the white. Yeah, I'll just pull that out. Actually, it doesn't matter which one you do. You can take in a, a two inch or a 1.25. So you can take out that adapter and this is the two inch version. Fits right in and then you tighten it down. And that then has got, um, that will then serve to protect it a little bit uh, against moisture, which you do want to keep away. And moisture is absolutely inevitable. The reason it's inevitable because it's outside, you're going to get dew on it no matter what you do. So um, this will help in keeping your optics nice and dry so that um, uh, mold, things like that, um, particularly fungus, is less likely to form. So that's what that accessory is. So probably it's time now to have a look at the case on equivalent and see how they've gone. Um, with their approach and um, the first thing you'll notice with the case on is it has a handle god that's useful um, it's much easier to mount because of it um, if you do prefer though to want to mount something on top of your rings you can detach the rings and you can remove um, the handle and that will then I believe give you your um, your screw back where your hole uh, where you can then put a different type of accessory or whatever else you need but Personally, I love the handle. It just really makes it so much uh, easier to work with. Um, starting from the top again, you've got a metal dew cap. Um, it's quite interesting that it's not just a dew cap, it actually has got an aperture cap. So this will turn your, um, your telescope into an F15. If you're using a bright target, I'm talking Jupiter, I'm talking the moon, you're able to just um, pop on this aperture cap and away you go. Of course, in low uh, when you're trying to gather all the light that you possibly can, you simply take off the whole lot and um, go from here. Um, rather than being f11, Kason have gone um, pretty much full f12 at um, f11.8. So that does um, push up that quality just that little bit further uh, because of the length. And let's look at um, the dew shield, which you go, wow, look at that. Um, yes, it is actually triple the aperture, which is what's actually uh, recommended by Sidgwick. But Kason actually the only manufacturer that we know of that has actually applied it and gone to full triple length dew shields for instruments like this. What does that do? But well, remember we talked about the, the TS Optics version, which um, exposes about 25% of, uh, of the front to the sky. This one drops it way back pretty much uh, all the way. So this is, you can do quite extended observations with this one with less of a dew effect compared to the TS Optics version. And of course, um, 
and that works really well. So what you would do is you simply extend it. Um, what you do then is you loosen, uh, you would then loosen, and we didn't do this on the other one, but I will demonstrate it on here because I think it's quite useful to understand. Once you have installed this onto your mount and put all of your accessories on just the way that you want it, you need to do something called balancing, right, which is where pretty much you find the center point. The case on rings um, are probably, um, I think they are superior. They're thicker um, and they're a little bit um, easier to handle. And what you can do uh, once you've loosened them is you can then slide them up and down um, and find that correct center point that you've got it um, where exactly where you want it. And then you would tighten up um, those, uh, those rings again nicely um, so it's ready to go. Um, because Kason haven't done the split tube design that TS Optics, uh, the TS Optics manufacturer has, which is a, uh, has done, we've got the finder more on the front, so it is a little bit more out of the way. Um, the, uh, you've still got the fine focuser. At this sort of a focal length, you almost don't need a fine focuser, but they've both got it. They're both super good quality um, focuses and you'll be happy really with either of them. And again, you've got your triple, um, you've got your, your triple lock at the back here, so you can um, you can install um, all of your two inch and your one point two five inch accessories. This comes out. That's your adapter there um, that you've got. This actually, that's a good question. I've noticed that this one here has actually got um, compression ring um, installed on it. So this makes me a little bit curious about whether the TS Optics one's got one. Let's just have a quick look on that point. The aperture cap back, back on. Okay, so with the TS Optics version, um, it probably does. I mean, look, yeah, it does. So they've both got um, that's great. So they've both got nice um, uh, compression rings there. So you've got a nice, solid, even tightening of it. The, the screws aren't going to be digging into your um, into your scope. And that's just the way we want it. And even the 1.25 inch on both of the units have. They really are, have put a lot of love into both of these units. So that's something that you'll probably be, be quite happy with. Um, in the way of accessories that come with it, um, what else can I say about it? Um, the case also comes with another little nice feature. Let me have you, you show that to you. What it is, is this here. And this is, it comes with an extension tube. So whereas, um, so with the TS Optics, they are both, by the way, exactly the same length. So both of them are 1.2 meters pretty much in length. Um, and what you would do with this one, this is, you, you could, when your um, observations require um, a little bit more length, you can simply install this and you tighten up the ring and away you go. So you can go straight to, um, Bino viewing and regular viewing just with your ordinary extension tube and away you go. It is completely solid, works really, really well, and it prevents you from having to unscrew this end and so forth. So it is just a really, really handy feature to have. And of course, then you can simply put the other one back in. You just ignore the extension by pretend it's not there. And then if you want to pack up again or, or anything, then you can just unscrew that and away you go. The other super feature that this one has is it includes a full length carry bag with it as a standard. So with the TS Optic ones, you've probably got to buy an extra bag or something, or think about how you're going to store and transport it. Whereas the Kason comes with a nylon handy bag uh, that is full length, has got plenty of room for your accessories and eyepieces. And that's just um, a really, really convenient feature. Price wise, they're a little bit similar, but the Kason is a little bit even less expensive. So there's another um, bonus that comes with that. The other thing we've done, um, I've been hanging out on uh, cloudy nights for a really, really long time over there. Um, I'm a big fan as well of uh, classic telescopes and classic eyepieces. So Astrodog have worked with Kason to produce a new ortho range, and it's a great time to do it. For those of you that are familiar with the Fujiyama eyepieces, uh, these are Fujiyama orthoscopics and Sadly, um, the, these are now out of production. Uh, we've got a couple of these left, and then that'll be it. We won't ever uh, be getting these again. And the same thing for the Masayama 
um, orthoscopics for those of you that know that range. Um, they're actually made by OHI, both of them, uh, and the production of that has ceased. So once they're gone, they're gone. Um, so what's going to replace it? Well, we've been working with KSI and new ortho range. So I'm happy to introduce that to you today. So um, these can, you can get a, a case on handy bag, um, which has got all these on um, ortho range that um, they just fit right in the way you go. So we've got a 24 millimeter, a 16.8, um, a 10.5, a 7.5 and a 4.5. So five of these will complete your range. We'll talk about this one in a minute and what makes that one a bit different. Um, but let's have a little look at them. First of all, do you remember the, um, the old classic Volcano Fox? That, this is sort of inspired, I suppose, from that design. Um, they are lovely. Um, just the design on those is fantastic. They are fully multi-coated. They're the Ortho 2 range. They compare very favorably as well with the Fujiyamas. Um, and uh, the eyepieces are tremendously comfortable to look through. For those of you that don't know, orthoscopics have a field of view of between 45 and 50 degrees. However, their manufacture is very simple and because of the way that they are designed, um, they also are distortion free. They give you excellent color reproduction. So these are particularly ideal for viewing beautiful things like the jewel box where color is just everything with the reason that you're viewing it. So they go up all the way up to 24 uh, millimeters and just something, as I said, I'm a big fan of the classic eyepieces on, um, uh, on Cloudy Nights. I'm a bit of a collector from there. And I noticed that when I had all these amazing, beautiful old classic telescopes, but often the eyepieces had gone missing for them. The quality back then was quite poor. The coatings weren't particularly nice on them. So I thought what we'll do for all of you guys that uh, have classic telescopes with 0.965 inch eyepieces natively, um, is we're gonna make you some really nice orthos in 0.965 inch size. That's right. So you're gonna have this full range available to you in orthos in native 0.965 inch barrels uh, to enjoy. And um, I think that you're just going to absolutely love them. So I hope you enjoy those um, for when you're developing them. And as I said, these scopes, they are tremendously good. These long focal range, uh, these long focal length telescopes are amazing with, um, even inexpensive eyepieces. And this is what we're talking about. These, eye, the Fujiyama is about 159 Australian. Um, these ones here are only $129 or so Australian. So you can collect the whole lot of them for like one, you know, higher end eyepiece and um, have the full range as a get go. And you will always go back to orthos um, as just offering terrific views. And you can simply then zip this up the way you go and you just take them away. So I hope you've enjoyed that um, presentation. One last thing I'll mention is the weights of those two telescopes. The TS Optic weighs in at um, four point, almost 4.9 kilograms, whereas the um, Kason version comes in about 300 grams heavier at 5.2 kilograms. So um, they're both about the same sort of weight. Um, probably the handlebar, the longer um, dew shield is probably what uh, would make up those um, extra weights on the um, case on them. So uh, thank you for joining us today and um, having a bit of a look at those eyepieces and long focal range. Um, I'm not much of a YouTuber, but you know, the usual like and subscribe uh, for when I put something new up. Um, and I wish you a great day. Thank you.